Hello, this is Counter Attack, and this is the sixth turn of the Great Goblin Raid. It's currently autumn of year two. I thought for sure the game would end last season, but uh, the Fjordlanders eked out uh, a narrow, narrow, um, I guess, <laughs> draw. Uh, so the goblins currently control one uh, Fjordlander uh, loyal settlement here, and the Fjordlanders managed to capture back Bogunot which will be a tough nut to crack since it is a fort. So, uh, goblin turn. First things first, do they want to lay waste to their last settlement? The answer is no. Okay, um, then they have to pay their last gold, <laughs> last gold, uh, to keep that settlement alive. Okay, now uh, they don't have any um, locked heroes, but we're going to ready all their units. All right, they absolutely need money if they're not, if, if they're gonna continue into the next season, which will be the final season. So they have to win this season or next season. They absolutely need money. And so my thinking here is I want this hill troll to attack this lair to try to get some money out of it. But there's this spellcaster there and I don't want the spellcaster to do like a cancel or something, right? So the spellcaster is unprotected, so I think I think this is a legal move. This guy's gonna go one, then he's gonna, well, let's see, hold on. He's gonna go one, two, three, four, that's better. And he's gonna do a C move right into that coastal hex and kill the leader because you can move right into a enemy leader if they're alone and kill them. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Call me out if I'm wrong, please. Okay, so now this guy is gonna attack the lair. Let's see what we get. Hopefully it's not a repeat. It is not, and it is terrifying. It's a drog beer. Looks like some kind of undead dragon worth a lot of coin, not exactly what I wanted. But a monster only needs one hit to kill, so could be okay. Thinking about this a little more, this is not okay. The Dragobeer has ambush, so it gets to strike first. It has range, I guess from a breath weapon or something, uh, which means it wins ties, and it's a spellcaster. And so it can cast Fjordland spells, it's under the control of Fjordland. Cannot cast uh, blessings or use Fjordland treasure, but it may cast spells. So this attack uh, actually happens as, um, I guess I guess we can decide if we want to do it as an ambush, and absolutely we want to do it as an ambush as the Fjordlanders. So there's no, no casters over here that are um, uh, goblin spellcasters, so here we go. We're we got a, uh, I think that's enough, but might as well roll it out. Yeah, half hit's definitely enough because it's one hit. This guy only needs one hit to kill. Now, in, remember in ambush, you strike and then strikes back if they survive. So he did not survive, so can't strike back. Wow, uh, this guy possibly could win the game for Fjordland. You know, that, that is a powerful creature. Why would I say that? Well, on Fjordland's turn, this monster can do a strike because it's flying up to three hexes. It's flying because the little wings there. So it can strike up to three hexes away and maybe snipe this guy out, right? But uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. It's Goblin's turn right now. Okay. Finger cutter. Finger cutter on the move. These guys go three, but ignore the mountain costs. So one, two, three. We're adjacent to... Odgervik, gonna do an attack. Let me see what the battle magic situation is. Um, I think if this is gonna be cast, it has to be cast now before battle magic starts wasting spells. I think this is from Fjordland. Um, oh, wait a minute, Fjordland doesn't have a spellcaster anywhere near. Let's see, one, two, three, four, ah, yeah, they do. Uh, Cancel an attack or striking its target hex. One, two, three, four. Oh no, it's just out of range of their one 
hero. Okay, but just for rules purposes, this is cancel an attack or strike against the target hex. I, I think that should happen before battle magic, because otherwise this guy would cast a bunch of battle magic and, and it'd be big waste. So, so uh, never mind. They can't do that. It's out of range. Finger Cutter is going to wield Soul Drinker. Its blade flashed white as it bit. Okay, so uh, it's not um, in combat with another hero, but it does gain one white die. Um, actually, I'm going to put that, yeah, so I put that in my tableau to indicate the treasure has been used, and I can't use it again until I pull it back into my hand. So, uh, yeah, so here we go. That is three white dice and a black die. Actually, I do see something I can cast on the Fjordland side. They're going to get a black die. Um, there's no mage required here, so just to remind myself, I'll throw the black die there. Okay, so they're casting Shield Wall. One hit. These guys. Two hits. That kills the Hobgoblins or Finger Cutter. I'm going to take the Hobgoblins out. Is that right? That way I can still cast spells with Finger Cutter, possibly. Okay, there's not much else we can do. We just gotta go all out here. Hobgoblins attacking the port. Two hits. Oh, this could be it. Miss, wow. Free hold holders are dead. Wow, they needed that. Okay, I guess they're back alive. Get three gold for looting. Take control. The income of the uh, Fjordlanders goes down. Wow. One interesting thing, the rules aren't super clear to me, but in this area, so I'd be curious about advice from the designer. If these goblin warriors go up here in order to attack here, can they do that? Or do they have to take on the state of the leader underneath and become spent? Wasn't 100% sure on that from the reading of the rules. So just to avoid like pure cheating, I'm gonna come over here. We're gonna see if we can get another attack in there. During battle magic, we're actually gonna cast Instruments of Mischief. I didn't realize that I don't need a spellcaster for this uh, blessing. So double the combat rating of a goblin hero, warrior, sneak, or elite. This is a goblin warrior. So we get four white dice. We get another loyal settlement. One hit, uh, unlikely, unlikely. Here's the two Coming back. Wow. Dang, there's another three loot. Eliminated the freeholder, so don't use freeholders to hang on to things. But man, it was a tight game, so um, reducing income, getting a control marker. It was a very tight game, so I don't, I don't think I could have built anything else besides freeholders all over the place. Okay, so that was pretty key there. Um, yeah, so we got a bunch of money, but not a lot of good places to build units. In fact, no places to build units right now. Let's see. Okay, we're just going to try to hold on to what we have, I think, here. So let's see what we have down here. So this guy, I can heal the Hobgoblin for two. I have six gold, flush with gold. Recover him for two. He's not besieged. There's only one enemy next to the port. So heal him for, t for two. Um, I think we're going to build two goblin warriors for two gold. Just to put some a barrier to the east of Astrid Fjord. This place will probably fall over there, yeah, but um, this could fall. I'm trying to think what, what I can do here. Something to get rid of this guy. This might be highly questionable. I'm gonna spend the last two gold to build a hero. Good, it's a caster, it's Weasel Eyes. I want it going right here, and this unit hasn't even moved yet. Uh, I want a caster over here for reasons. 
um, you know, this interesting spell I could use to cancel an attack. So I'm trying to just protect my, my area. Um, yeah, so that was my last gold. Weasel Eyes. He's a caster. His stack wins draws in combat. A draw is when neither side gets a, a hit. Okay, this guy, he's just gonna go like this. Just blocking, get, trying to prevent too many attacks from getting in here. So I'm down to one unit. Um, I could, I think I do have some spell situations I could use. Oh, I have two units. One, one back on the island here, which he's definitely not gonna move, but I, might, I haven't spent him yet. I actually have a couple guys here. You know what? I'm not going to get this place back. Let's send in the mountain troll. Just r raise it to the ground if we can. That's what we're going to do. There is a spellcaster there, so I better check what's up. Uh, what's this lady's name? Lieva. She's casting Cloud of Darkness. Discard a spell. We'll discard Tidal Shelter to cancel the attack. This guy's going to go one, two for the river, three for the raised settlement. Four to join finger cutter, and I'm pretty sure it has to go uh, spent. Not 100% sure, but pretty sure. Okay, finally, we have this one last guy over here. Now, we're not going to spend any spells, we're going to save them. Alright, that is the goblins' turn. Probably their last turn. Hard to say, though. Here they go. What do we have here? We got a, a churn. So the goblins, they have three spells in their hand. So they can take a blessing or take the soul drinker back into their hand. I think they're gonna try, bring soul drink, drinker back into their hand. The Fjordlanders have one spell left over. They're gonna keep that spell and draw two. Remember, because it's churn, we can only choose one of the three disciplines of magic. And uh, those could be good for on our turn. They look offensive just at a quick glance. Okay, and a reminder of uh, Fjordland's income is five. So let's go ahead and start their turn. Here's their goal. We'll go ahead and ready everybody. Uh, Lieva Uruksdottir uh, has um, unlocked. Okay, so how can we win as Fjordland without going to the last turn? Well, there's, the goblins have three settlements, so if we can take two of them, the goblins have no money, and they'll lose on the next turn. So, let's see if we can take two of these settlements back. It's going to be tough, though. I think, I think the first thing to do is this, uh, I can't remember what this thing's called, it's a drogir, drogir, something like that. Okay, that thing, that thing's got a range of three because it's flying. One, two, three. I think it can target these hobgoblins over here. And is it going to strike? Or is it going to... No, it's absolutely going to strike. That's all it can do. I don't see anything Weasel Eyes can do about this. Here comes the strike. Two hits. Here's the defense. One hit. We could sacrifice Weasel Eyes, but I want Weasel Eyes there for defensive spellcasting. So we'll flip the Hobgoblin. This uh, drogue here um, is spent. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. I think this guy, he's gonna take his C move because he's Fjordland now. Go one, two. and attack these goblin warriors. He's got uh, three hits. Uh, no hits. So, uh, I was... There are spells they could have cast, but they're saving them, okay, for the... So the Goblin Warrior's wiped out, and he is not going to advance. One thing I do when I play games like where the enemy can react is I, I try to tempt them to 
spin themselves, right? So I'm sort of tempting this guy to, to use defensive spells. I'm trying to purge from my mind what the enemy spells are. I'm just trying to play as I would normally, even if with that, if I, as if I didn't have that knowledge. So I might come over here and try to attempt, attempt another uh, spell wastage. So uh, I think we're going to build some Sea Reavers here in Thelstoft, finally building down here on the other side of Halgair Bay. Uh, they cost three, so we'll spend our, our last five, get two and change. And they're going to use a sea move to land here in the mountains next to Odgrevik. And they're going to attack. We have no spellcasters within range. Is that true? That's true. Let's see if the goblin uh, finger cutter wants to cast a spell. There's only one that's appropriate, and I think we're going to save it. Okay, so, here comes this attack. Got some C Reavers. One hit. Defender. No hits. Wow. Uh, this is a fragile unit. We will loot that hostile ter territory, take two back. We get our come in, get control back of our territory, get one income advance. Okay, we just need to knock out one more settlement to win. Okay, I'm kind of playing this like chess now because uh, we're down to the wire here. So, let me tell you what I'm thinking here. I'm thinking this guy over here, he can actually get right there to attack. This guy, of course, can attack, but if he does, he'll block him from getting over here. He can walk over here and attack, but then blocks this guy, assuming this guy comes over. So, I think so. These are the two best units to attack here, though. So that's what we're going to do. So he's going to start here. I would have rather him go second, because I, you know, I know what the spells are, and I, but I'm playing as if I don't know. So he's going to do a big attack. Theoretically, that's a great attack. But somewhere in here, during battle magic, target attacking army becomes finished. This combat is canceled. And I can't do anything about it. But that's how I would play if I, if I was against an opponent. Okay. So now this guy will come down uh, one, two, three. He can go four. And then he'll slide over here. And he's going to attack too. Um, there's a spellcaster ranged. So let's see what kind of battle magic we're going to do. Okay, uh, the attacker is not going to cast a spell. Just a reminder, this is kind of down to the wire here, so let's check this out. Battle magic, the attacker may play magic. The defender then may play cantrips, then the attacker may play cantrips. So they're not going to play magic in step A. Okay? They want the defender to show their hand. Okay, So the defender is going to cast two cantrips. Cantrip one, they're going to use the uh, Soul Drinker. Uh, it is against an enemy unit, so they're going to get three white dice, two other white dice, natural white dice, <laughs> and you know, here's the natural ability, and then Soul Drinker's adding three. Wow. Um, I guess I should have remembered that, if that my enemy has Soul Drinker in their hand. But uh, yeah. Okay, and then they're also going to cast uh, Army in Caster's Hex gains a black and a white, so they're going all out here. Look at that for defense. So uh, the, it eliminates the caster though, so I'm sacrificing while Weasel Eyes, which may or may not be a good idea because he does, he can absorb a hit. But look at all these dice, okay? So now the attacker's cantrips. We're going to play Heat Ray. Target unit, monster, or garrison reduces its combat rating by one, one black. So we'll remove a black. Okay, a lot of stuff going on in this last one here. Now since I got all the defender's dice out, I'm going to roll the defender first. I've been doing attacker first all this time, but let's do defender first. Wow. Uh, oh, okay, it is a lot. Three hits. Let's see if that seven explodes. 
It does four hits. Defender has four hits. Put that there. We cannot win, but we can reduce the hits. Two. Honestly, I think I would have preferred to not reduce the hits, uh, but I had no choice. So I reduced them to two hits. Um, that's going to leave someone behind. Um, it'd be nice if they were wiped out, because then I can sail someone in here. Well, I think we need to keep the spellcaster, so this guy's gone. Well, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. Okay, so let's see. You know, I'll kill the ranger. Let's see what else we can do here. That, that might be the game. Okay, I think there's only one last possibility. It still requires a chain of events. We have four gold left. We're going to build them in Attakirk. Uh, some sea reavers. Cost three. We're down to one gold. They're going to sail up to here. And there's a little river here, right? So I could attack across the river, but I'm going to use my two moves to get into the mountains. We're going to attack this guy. The whole point of this is we're trying to make a space here for someone to sail around over to here. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, there is a spellcaster nearby. Nothing they can do about it. Okay, so let's get the Sea Reaver attack going. And if I can clear these guys, you know, there's no, there's no way, to, yeah. You know, there, there's a chance. There's a slight chance. So they got one hit on the goblins. Goblins missed. That is open terrain. So we did kill the goblins. We're not going to advance. And then these sea reavers here are going to go one, two, three, four, land here, attack here. This is the last possibility. Oh, oh, critical hit, critical hit. Yes. The goblins need one success. They didn't get it. Oh my gosh. Goblins eliminated. The hobgoblins. They lose their marker. The Fjordland loot back. Move in. Their income goes up. All right, let me assess the situation. I am uh, declaring Fjordland the winner. And here's why. Let's just say they ended their turn now. They have a little bit more they can do, right? If they ended their turn now, there's one turn left. Uh, the goblins would have to pay one gold at the beginning of the income phase, or in the income phase, to pay for their only one settlement they have. And they have no gold. And there's no, there's nothing on the board. There's no spells or anything that could like magically give them gold so they would collapse okay so rather than like force us to watch all that uh yeah game over well i really enjoyed this you know i, I don't get a lot of joy out of uh, solo play but this game is really neat um some some things that i sort of learned is uh monsters are actually good um like, especially if you can get a wandering monster, they're good for striking, so that's nice. Uh, but super important are leaders. Like, I found every time I didn't have a leader, like, I was hurting. I'd have all these amazing spells, and I couldn't use them. So having leaders is super important. I probably didn't give them enough importance um, early. Uh, I really like the different traits of the uh, factions. The, the, the Fjordlanders ability to see move is really awesome. I don't know how they'll play on a, a map that there's not a lot of water on, though I imagine most maps have major rivers on them, so maybe it doesn't matter. Um, but um, I also like the swarming nature of the goblins. They're like so cheap, you just you can swarm. Uh, I obviously made a lot of mistakes in this game, and it's, hopefully I didn't make too many in this last play. But yeah, re really cool. Really cool and balanced. Now, did my did the way I played made the mistakes cause, you know, impact anything? Probably, but 
but it feels very balanced. It was a nail biter most of the game. Interestingly, I think my uh, gameplay here uh, made the designer reconsider a rule. Uh, so go check out the errata on Board Game Geek. But um, I built a huge unit in a friendly settlement, and it raised it right because huge room units raise. Um, I also did a, a little bit of like voluntary raising of uh, welcoming settlements, and that really hampered the goblins. Okay, so uh, mid game he had he has issued a, a correction to the rules to sort of eliminate something that was sort of not caught in playtesting. Um, I, I think it's perfectly fine though uh, the this modification he's making. So yeah, no longer can you just like raise your own settlements. So imagine if. If I just made made this guy early in the game and just like flew around to each of my settlements and squashed them, right? Like it would sort of invalidate uh, the goblins' victory conditions with through a game mechanic. So uh, anyway, go check that out. I am super excited to try this live. What uh, that is with other folks, and I think I'm gonna try to play a two mapper and three to four factions when I. Um, Play with my gaming group live so we'll see how that goes all right well if you watch the whole series thank you very much